let's look at four varying difficulty levels of completing this square. By the end of this video, you're going to be an expert. So, most likely, when you've done completing the square, you said you need to half the middle term and all of that, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Let's just quickly explore why we even do that. All right? What do we mean by a completed square? Well, this thing about what we, what even is a square. <laughs> so, a square looks like this, close enough, where we have equal sides. Yeah, and the area is x squared. Okay, now we're going to look generally, okay, we're going to look at a square where the side lengths are like, I don't know, x plus a, uh, let's remove that, x plus a. Okay, and the center then will be x plus a squared. Okay, well the area would be x plus a squared. So this is why we're saying complete the square. We are forming a square. The area would look something like this. Okay, now... Let's expand that. So what does x plus a squared even look like? Well, if I was to expand x plus a squared, this right here, x plus a squared is this multiplied by itself, which you get x squared. Here you have xa or ax. We like to put the number first. a is just a random number. Here we have another ax. Together, they make 2a x, and then finally we have a squared, okay? So this expands to this, all right? So let's write that again. x plus a squared is all of this, okay? Now this looks like all of these, right? So this is the expanded form. We want to rewrite it in this form, which is the completed square form. Well, this a squared is not necessarily this constant at the end. In fact, that's something else, okay? So it's all about what's going on in front of x, okay? This is dependent on this, okay? Not these random numbers, which this one doesn't even have it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract a squared from both sides, okay? What am I going to be left with? I'm going to have x plus a squared minus a squared is this bit, okay? And this is completing the square, okay? When you have a quadratic, yeah, you take that coefficient of x and you half it. And then you subtract this number squared. Can you see that? Yeah? So when we complete the square, I'm going to keep this here for now, over here, we say, look, this is a completed square, okay? Now we're thinking, what squared gives you x squared? Well, that's just x, okay? Now going back to here, what goes inside this bracket is half the coefficient of x. We just divide it by 2. What's the coefficient of x here? It's 2. So we're just going to divide it by 2, which is 1, okay? Then all you do is you minus wherever that number is, squared, okay? You minus this number, squared. So we're going to minus that number, squared, which is just 1. And that's the completed square form. Obviously, you can write squared and then simplify it. doesn't matter, yeah? So keep in mind, guys, it's the subtraction of the number squared, yeah? There's no brackets or anything. You're just subtracting wherever that number is, squared. Forget about the sign in front of it. Okay, so that's what's going on there. What about this? Well, first, yeah, remember guys, when we complete the square, we always do it to the first two terms. Wherever constants here doesn't make a difference, all right? You might have heard that when you have a constant, you just bring it down, right? Yeah, that's true, because here I'm going to add b to both sides. That's like us just carrying over the constant, okay? So it doesn't do anything. Now, what is different about this quadratic and this one? This is negative. It's not looking good, one. We need that to be positive. How do we do that? We don't just times things by minus 1 because they might just give you an expression without the equals y. The reason I'm writing y equals is because it's to do with quadratics and sketching and all that stuff, which I've done a video on recently. 
What we do is we factorize. We're going to factorize out a minus 1 because remember negative means minus 1. We're going to factorize out minus 1 from the first two terms only. Okay, when we complete the square, it's only to the first two terms anyway. Okay, so we don't need this anymore because the logic is sound, mate. All right, let's factorize negative 1. Just for this example, I'm going to explicitly write negative 1. I open a square bracket so that we don't have too many circular brackets. Now, when you factorize, you're essentially dividing. Yeah, you're dividing by what you're factorizing. So here's minus 1. This divided by minus 1 is x squared. This divided by minus 1 is positive 12x. Then the 5 just stays. Now we complete the square on this. We get y is minus 1, square bracket, open up a circular bracket. This is the completed square. We have x, half that coefficient, 6, minus this number squared, 36. Close that bracket, you have the plus 5. Now we expand the minus 1 in. Now be careful, this bracket is protecting this. So the minus 1 has to stay on the outside. So we're going to get y is the negative 1 of x plus 6 squared. Then minus 1 times minus 36 is plus 36. Then we have plus 5. And that's basically it. I'm going to write this positive term first. Yeah, we don't really like writing minuses uh, at the beginning. So these two added together is 41. So we're going to get y is 41 minus, now we don't need the 1 anymore, x plus 6 squared. And that's done. Okay. What's going on here? Well, we see that again, the coefficient of x squared is not 1. So we need to factorize. Okay. Let's factorize out the 2 from the first two terms only. You divide both of them by 2. Yeah, remember, when you're factorizing, you're doing a division. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we just get x squared. Minus 8 divided by 2 is minus 4. Then we have x plus 10. All right, now we can complete the square. We get 2 square bracket, circular bracket, x. Complete that square. Half the coefficient of x minus 4 divided by 2 is minus 2. Then we minus that number. Forget about the minus. That number squared is quattro plus 10. Multiply in the 2. So you get y is 2 bracket x minus 2 squared. 2 times minus 4 is minus 8 uh, plus 10. Okay. Minus 8 plus 10 is positive 2. And instead of me writing everything underneath and cramping everything, uh, let's just write plus 2. There's your answer. Did you notice actually that at the beginning, even though everything is even, I didn't need to factorize out the 2 from everywhere, okay? Uh, it gives you less things to multiply out at the end anyway, yeah? You would have got 2 bracket x minus 2 squared plus 1, which you would then have to multiply that all in anyway. Okay, final one, the hardest type of completing the square. You'll see why it's the hardest type uh, in a second. So. Let's factorize. So we can see the coefficient of x squared is minus 4. We have to take out that whole thing. Minus 4, lots of. Divide both of these by minus 4. Minus 4 divided by minus 4 is 1. That's why we were factorizing out minus 4 in the first place. So we get x squared. 4 divided by minus 4 is minus 1. So we get minus x minus 1. Okay, now we're going to complete that square. So we get minus 4, big square bracket, circular bracket, squared and then x. Now we need to half that coefficient. What do most students do? They write, well not most, my students definitely don't do this. They write minus 0.5. Do not do that. It's going to make things very awkward when you come to square that number, especially if it's a non-calculator paper. When you do 1 divided by 2 in a calculator, what does it tell you first? It tells you a half because it's much easier to work with, all right? So think of this as minus 1, which when we half that, we get minus a half. Okay, I've written this x badly. Okay, imagine you had halved something and you get one sixth. Yeah, are you going to decimalize that? You're definitely not, right? And when you square 0 0.16666 recurring, it's just not possible. Yeah, so you're going to write one sixth and then it's easier to square it. Here with a half, how do you square a fraction? You square the top one and you square the bottom four. Okay, close that bracket minus one. All right. Now we expand this in. 
So we get y is minus 4 lots of x minus a half squared. Now this is nice. Minus 4 times minus a quarter. The negatives would cancel. 4 lots of a quarter. A quarter of 4 is 1. So we get positive 1 minus 1. Very interesting, Moit. This cancels out. And we're left with our final answer. Y is uh, minus 4 lots of x minus a half squared. And that is our final answer. So easy, medium, medium hard, maybe. Maybe this one's more medium hard, medium and hard. Okay. So guys, I've gone through four different types of questions, explaining the logic behind completing the square. Super important when we sketch quadratics. In fact, I did a video uh, like a week ago or something, about a week ago, uh, where I sketched quadratics, the hardest thing, eight marks. So go and check that out. And guys, if you learned something today, I would appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more GCSE content like this. And if you're interested in my GCSE courses, there is a link down in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.